Hello there. I'm Savannah. I'm Casey. We're Hey Wanderer. And today we're starting a new series about Tulum, Mexico. So we just got back from a trip to Tulum. This was our fourth time there. It was our third time together. Yes. And we get a lot of questions. Um, can we do it affordably? How do I get there? Just any question you could think anything of. Anything you could think of. We've gotten it. And we've written m multiple blog posts um, about our trips and just little things here and there. But we figured, let's do everything. Let's cover everything in a series on YouTube. Let's talk it out. I think after this many trips, we finally like fully grasped what's kind of going on there. Obviously, you don't have to go four times to understand Tulum. No. But, but there are just some tips and tricks. And we think we figured most of it out. Yeah. So. I think after four years, we're like Tulum travel experts. Like, we're not <laughs> yeah. Tulum living there experts, but yeah. just traveling there. So One can wish. Yes. We are here to give all that information to you. Welcome to Everything You Need to Know, Tulum Edition. <laughs> In this video, we're going to talk about everything logistics. We are just going to put up a question that people have asked. And we're gonna answer it. First question is, how do I get there? So Tulum is like an hour and a half ish from Cancun. So Cancun is the airport everyone flies into. It's the cheapest airport to fly into. It's the closest. I don't know why you'd fly in anywhere else. Apparently, there's another one like three hours away. But yeah, but why would you do that? Why would you do that? Cancun is an hour and a half. Um, once you arrive in Cancun, there are multiple ways to get to Tulum. We've always rented a car, and I would say that's, I would recommend that. Yeah, that's our preferred. I think a lot of people don't. Yeah. Um, and it, it also depends, I would stop here and say it depends. Are you going to a resort outside of Tulum, mm -hmm. or are you staying actually in, in Tulum? In Tulum, right. If you're going to a resort, then, which is, there, there are not, not really many in Tulum proper. But if you're staying in a resort, they'll they'll have a shuttle. They'll, they'll bring there. you right to the if resort. If you're just going to sit there at the resort and go to the beach every day, maybe don't, don't rent a car. Don't bother yeah. renting a car. Um, that's what my mom and I did the first time we went. Honestly, regretted that. I wouldn't recommend that as a way to experience Tulum. But it's not, I would say it's not really experiencing Tulum right. because you're not in the actual area you're almost in like a suburb you're not in a suburb it's not a, that's not a thing but exist, yeah. where a suburb would be located in re relation to a city like that's how far out it is assuming that's not the place you're staying yeah. then um you know, i'm gonna say or, or this whole video is assuming that you're not staying there right right other ways assuming that you don't have some sort of shuttle service that your hotel's providing and you're not renting a car you can take I and mean, you can hire shuttles you can mm -hmm. hire taxis I would kind of work that out because we'll touch on this in another video you really need to kind of know what to expect or you'll you will try to get taken advantage of yeah if you're getting a taxi from your hotel back to the airport they can make sure you negotiate a, a deal with your taxi driver that isn't outrageous but it is when you're on your own it's a little easier to get taken advantage of but that is an option of a way to get from the airport to Tulum if you're decided that you're not going to rent a car and you're just going to like walk around and taxi in town or bike. So that brings us to the next question, how do you get around? Assuming you haven't rented a car, which again, you know, we don't work for a car company, but I, that is just to me, it's just the easiest thing to yeah, do. Yeah, it allows you to go outside of Tulum, I mean, it just gives you more freedom and you just pay that one price for the car and you're not having to negotiate every time you go somewhere. Depending on where you're staying in Tulum, even if you're staying on the hotel, like sort of the beach zone area, there is still like going into town, which is like, I don't know, like a 10 to 15 minute uh, yeah, depending car on ride, where you are. depending yeah. on where you are. Or there's like the ruins and there's all the cenotes. Mm -hmm. And, and I, they're all out like snowtays you got to get outside of Tulum for the most part so you're going to yeah. want to have a way to get you are going to want a car so that's either you rent a car or you rent a taxi right you can and then bikes there's bikes everywhere you'll mm -hmm. see people bike riding all the time a lot of hotels a lot of Airbnbs provide them either for free or at a cost 
So that's fun. We rode the bikes for the yeah. first time this time, and it is fun. It is a good way to get around. Yeah, just like in the town, like right. If you're staying in the town and getting around to restaurants there, or even if you want to ride to the beach, that's great. It's just when you go anywhere outside of there right. that you're. And I'll be like super honest. Savannah and I love to bike ride, and we love. I love the idea of walking everywhere, but like when you're wanting to go to the beach and you have all your stuff and then you've got to mm-hmm. go home for the day, I'm not sure you're going to want a bike ride. Yeah. Another yeah. thing to think about is there are bike lanes in some places, but on the in the beach zone, you are riding on the road with the cars right. and even in town for the most part. I mean, it's not like here in Nashville where we are it is literally like a one lane this way one lane this way shared by bikes taxis cars everything there's like these huge uh speed bumps that they call topes and so that's just something to keep in mind when if you're deciding to ride a bike it's gonna it's not just like super leisurely because you do have to worry about cars yeah what is it like driving in Tulum I've actually never driven in Tulum. <laughs> I've experienced sitting in the passenger seat, and I could tell you a lot of things I think. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's usually usually me or my mom is driving. Usually me that ends up driving. I don't know why. That's just that's what happened, man. I'm the driver, um, and it's really not that stressful. Just like in comparison, I have visited Puerto Vallarta, and that was nuts. Like my mom and I rented a car there had it for a couple of hours and then returned it immediately (laughs) because it was just so insane driving there everything is pretty slow like you can't go very fast there's nowhere to like zip around super fast so so that's not really a big deal um but it is a free-for-all like you Mm -hmm. just have to relax and not take what the taxi drivers do there personally like if you're someone who sits and like someone cuts you off and you feel personally attacked like you just need to change (laughs) your mindset or let someone else drive and close your eyes and close your eyes there aren't any like lane markings for the most part sometimes when you go out of the city there's a main more main road that will have like a divider line but for the most part it's just like a really wide lane and it's just like i don't know are there two lanes one lane three lanes yeah it's crazy like the main there's two kind of main roads as a road that takes you from Tulum Cancun to Tulum that's a pretty big that's a main main road and that'll take you straight into Tulum town and then there's off of that road there's the other kind of main road that's much smaller it's just like a two-lane highway but that's where all the hotels a lot of restaurants all the beach clubs there's like a side that's the jungle side and then there's like the beach side and so um anyway that road there are huge massive speed bumps that you know that road topes topes yes that particular road those topes you're never going to be going so fast that you're going to like break your car but on that road to cancun they'll they come just kind out of, pop of up. nowhere yeah. and they always have a i think always have a sign that says tope and it has little bumps that looks like a speed bump um and it'll either be right where it is or it'll be in front of it and but you can't like just snow now because it'll yeah you gotta be and they're not it looks like they were painted yellow at one time but the paint has worn off and i'm talking they're the color of the road this wider than my hand there will be some yeah that are like really wide and tall and then there'll be some tiny tall ones ones, that those are the ones that but there have been a couple times that i mean you're going like 40 miles an hour and you're just you hit it and you're just you catch air and you're (laughs) flying so just watch out yeah you know because our rental car company this time like checked under the car to make sure because i'm sure they yeah. have problems with that yes so, yes. so um, you definitely have to stay focused but also be flexible right when you're driving right. um and just i don't know i feel like casey really gets in the spirit of things and drives like a taxi driver there <laughs> like because someone's it, going too slow you just go around them and you're driving them. in the, this lane over here it don't matter like right. it, it's not a big deal like we were pulled over on the side of the beach road uh, because people, that's what you do. You literally just pull over the side of the road, even if you're in the road, and people go around you. They do not care if you go over the sidewalk. They're like, whatever, I'll walk around. Um, and the cops are just like, I mean, every, this only happened one time, but they're like, hey, move. 
you know it's just not a bit it's just not a yeah like you're not gonna get a parking ticket or get a boot on your car you're not it's just not like that you know all that to say it is the, the the saving grace of the insanity is that you're never really going that fast. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just you're never it's pretty. Chill. You're not going 100 miles an hour. We've also, I would like to say, we've also only been in May, which is a part of its slow season. So I imagine that that beach road that's only got you know two lanes can get pretty crowded. But it's never been there's never been like a traffic jam. But I have heard from other people that go in their high travel air high travel times that it's a little more crazy so yeah just take that into consideration so let's talk about the different areas areas of town i think the question is where should i stay yeah okay so there are three main area i guess i'll say four because there's outside of tulum like the resorts like the that resorts you're not gonna do that you're not gonna do <laughs> but i will say so the first time my mom and i went to to Tulum we stayed in dreams Tulum but it's not really I don't know how they're legally allowed to say it's Tulum because it's it's not it's like 20 minutes away whatever so there's that area and then there is Tulum town which is like I don't want to call it a downtown because there are no like big buildings or anything like that but it is kind of like the main city center then there's like the beach road and then which it's just like I don't know how many miles long, but it's just full of hotels and. So the beach zone would be beach zone, or yeah. the hotel zone, like it's where most of the hotel. There yeah. are no Airbnbs there; it's all hotels. Yeah. And then, then in between the two, um, is Aldea Sama, which is where we stayed this past trip. Yes. Um, and it's like this huge area where they've built roads in the I mean it's in the jungle but they've just built all these roads and I have said multiple times it's like a gated community but it's not gated like it's not actually a, a gated community there is community, a guard but when you drive like in yeah they have their own security team and then a lot of the hotels and Airbnb spaces in there have their own security also so it is it is it is it has been being built ever since I have been there. I have visited. But it's kind of slowly growing. Yeah. I mean, it's so big. So it's a lot of space for them to build up. So there's like, there are hotels in there. There are condos. Stores, restaurants. Stores and restaurants. Not that many. But, um. Enough for, it's enough enough though where you can spend, do a couple, like a dinner or breakfast there. Right by where you're staying. Which is what, which is is what we did. And then also enjoy outside of all the Osama and we've we've stayed in all three areas yeah actually four all four yeah so basically the beach zone area you stay in a hotel over there there are some on uh, that are on the beach they're mostly on the beach but some will be on the side that is on the beach but the reason you would stay there is if you want to be on the beach yeah because they are more expensive um they don't all have air conditioning they don't all have air conditioning that's something you have to look into um, they all provide their own water and electricity because the city doesn't provide that, correct? Right, yeah, I don't, at the least on the beach knew, side, the last the I knew, side, like, you don't see, like, electric poles and they're not dug mm-hmm. underground, it's like, yeah. They, they have ha- to provide that themselves, um, so it's going to be more expensive. I mean, also, it's on the ocean, so that right. is more expensive. Um, everything on that road is more expensive, like the restaurants. You're going to pay more money there than the you shops. are if you're in the town. The yeah. shops, everything is more money. Um, it's all, for the most part, I don't think I've seen anything that's ugly over there. It's all yeah. designed very well. Yeah. Some of it may be older than other things, but it's all really beautiful. And the vibe, like the when you think of the Tulum vibe or someone talks about it, that's where you get that really is yeah. that beach area. And you know, if you ask us what's our favorite place we've stayed, I've honestly, and I mean this, you know, you can't beat opening your doors and they're seeing the ocean, but I didn't miss that that much when I stayed, when we stayed in, in town and we stayed in Aldi Zama. they all have, 
fair they, benefit. They do, yeah. So for staying in town, the reason that you would stay there, it, there are a lot of reasons, but one, it's cheaper. Um, you can get all kinds of beautiful Airbnbs right in the town. Another thing that's great about it is you just walk out of your Airbnb apartment, wherever. I think there are some hotels, any of that stuff, and you're just in the town. There's just stuff everywhere, restaurants, shops, um, little stores, anything you could think of. They have it, and you're just right there. So you don't even have to drive. You just step out. Um, you do have to drive if you want to go to the beach, so that is something to think about because I'm assuming that you actually do want to go to the beach right. since you're going to Tulum. A lot of them have a lot of them have pools. A also. lot of them have pools. Yeah, um, I think on the beach more hotels are getting little pools, um, but they don't. That's not not all of them have that. So at your Airbnb in town, most of them have the pool situation. Yeah, they're usually kind of they're smaller pools, but yeah, they're all nobody has a large pool in general unless yeah. you're at a resort um but it's not far from the beach it's not far at all like that should that if it if you're worried about it being too far that's not really a thing the the thing the other downside is that we'll touch more on this in a second but you have to go to a beach club if you want to go to the beach in tulum so you are going to be paying money to go to the beach basically um, that's just something that you need to consider if you're going to be staying in town or Aldi Asama for both of those places. You will have to pay some sort of money to be on the beach for yeah. the most part. And that's, you know, you almost need to do the math yes. because depending on how expensive the hotels are when you're going, it might be cheaper to stay. I doubt it. Even, I doubt it. But I doubt it. Because there are, because the, well, we'll get into this in a minute, but the each... Uh, hotel and beach club they each of them have their own um, yeah. minimum spend and it varies day to day so that is a cost the other con I think if you've never been to Mexico mm. oh I, mm -hmm. if you've if you're a little nervous about going to Mexico if you've heard bad things about traveling to Mexico you probably will feel uncomfortable staying there yeah um, if I was gonna rate for for if you're worried about safety uh, which I we're all worried about safety on some level but if I'm gonna rate the safety levels of these places I would go beach all the Azama town because I would go all the Azama beach town the to the hotels have security on the beach they all have their own security Okay. Hmm. I don't think they do. I don't remember. Oh, I do. Absolutely. But I guess that would make them the same. Yeah. Um, really, I would say the beach because you could just literally not go anywhere. But we'll yeah. say Aldi Azama and the beach would be on the same Kinda. level and town would be a little less um, secure. Yeah. Like we stayed in an Airbnb there that we loved and people love it and still go there um and it didn't actually have a secure like security guards and that's we stayed there it was fine but that's just something that you do have to think about when you're staying in town so Aldea Zama Aldea Zama is like in the most Tulum amazing way kind of like going into a suburb but it is way better and cooler and right than a it's suburb. very cool like um we had as Stated, we drove up, we had a security guard, asked us what room we were staying in. He checked every time we came in and out, he was there. They they mm -hmm. rotated. 24 shifts, hours a day, hours. there was someone there. Um, it is super bikeable, super walkable. They had some restaurants in there. Um, it was just really cool. I, I'm really excited to see what... Um, what's going to come there because they have so many things that are being built and we ate at some really great restaurants yeah, while we were there we and I just really liked I really liked our Airbnb I mean, I've always liked the Airbnbs we've stayed in um, it just is a different it's just a different it's vibe. a little more secluded feeling yeah. um I remember on this trip specifically being like wow it is so quiet which is something to think about for Tulum Town Last year, we had a couple nights where it was bumping. Bumping. And when we were staying in town, like one night there was a club, you could just hear the bass um, 
further into town, just the base all night. And then one night, right across the street, this family had like an all night birthday party all celebration. It was intense. So, Aldi Azama is more uh, secluded. There aren't parties going on. I, um, it is geared towards tourists. So, yeah. where the town, you're just like in with the people of Tulum. Oh, another thing to think about when you're choosing where to stay is if you're into luxury or if you're more into doing it the cheapest way possible. Um, if you are looking for something real luxurious, you're going to want to go to the beach. Like, we have some places for you, okay? We, have we will tell places. you where you need to go. Um, we have eaten dinner at a couple places where you're like, I wish I could stay here. It's beautiful. Right. It's, like, just every detail is thought about, and they are, they're just really doing a great job there um if you but you can also do it really cheaply like you could stay in a hostel if you wanted to we've never done that um but we're there are affordably. actually some really like i've seen airbnbs for like 40 dollars a night yeah you like, can do it's, it it is possible so you just kind of have to think how much money do i want to spend and figure out what your options are there so next question is it safe yes and no <laughs> I was like, what are you about to say? Is anything safe? Right. You know, so this is everybody's, uh, everybody's taller, everybody's level of safety is different. I, we have felt unsafe briefly. Okay, so just to give some perspective, I should have looked up the statistics, but you have a greater <laughs> chance of dying <laughs> Well, you get in your car today than you do of anything bad happening to you in Tulum. Yeah. And we like to say, um, not that to say that we don't live in a safe area, but the things that people, for the most part, are worried about in Tulum happen here in America. Here in Nashville. All the time. Here in Nashville. Here in our neighborhood. Um, I think it's important to think about that and, and to not think that only bad things happen in Mexico. Right. I think why case. people kind of heighten it and why it gets more scary is because you're in another country. Yeah, you don't speak the language. You don't really, yeah. it's not your culture. You don't know how people live there. So that does already make you a little fearful. But if you just think of the Mexican people just like American people, just speaking a different language, you're like, okay, it's the same. This people there are good people there are bad people random acts of violence are just as rare here as they are there yeah. i'm sure statistically someone could possibly tell me i'm wrong yeah. i don't know but but mostly we just think it's good to not live your life scared you basically like if you're really scared then you shouldn't go to mexico basically. yeah <laughs> like For if real. you're scared to even be in your own neighborhood Right. I would not take that into Mexico. If you're the type of person whose husband has to drive you to the bad side of town, which is where we live, which is not the it's bad not. side of town, <laughs> Some definitely people think that, don't go to Mexico. That has happened. That before. actually has happened. Um, so don't go to Mexico. Yeah. Just, well, you'll freak out. I would say, so if someone said, is it safe? I would be like, yeah, it's as safe as everything else. With that said... Our last trip to Tulum, uh, we hesitated to talk about this because we don't want to scare people off. It is it was a scary thing, but I'm going to give you two stories. One, when we were in Tulum last time, we heard gun we heard gunshots like bam, 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 bam. we were we were in our Airbnb. We were laying out on my mom was showering. Savannah and I were out laying on the balcony or in the, hammocks, in hammocks just chilling. And of course we were terrified and we like got down on the ground and ran inside. And um, I mean, it, we don't have to get super detailed, but it was machine guns right outside. Like yeah. it wasn't just like, oh, we heard a gunshot. Cause we hear that here in East Nashville a lot. It was just a little more intense. Yeah. So it was, we found out the next day it was like a drug gang thing. And it was directed specifically to a person no tourists were harmed. Everything was fine. Yeah. And we were at that. We were scared. I mean, I just think anybody would be scared right. if you heard a machine gun going off, like really close to where you were. It's that's natural. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah, for sure. But also Savannah and I were camping in the United States of America <laughs> in Kentucky. Yes. And 
we were camping. Maybe more terrified. I was more scared in this camping incident. We woke up in our tent. In our tent. Like to five or six a gunshot in. and a woman screaming bloody murder. Okay. And uh, I mean, it was dark. It was terrifying. I'm not going to get into it. Basically, I have no idea what happened. I, I called the police, obviously. It took me forever to be able to get to a place that had cell service to call the police. But, you we know. We were scared then, too. We were scared. I was more scared then because it was dark. True, and we were out in nature. Out like, in nature. No protection whatsoever. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that it all comes down to whether or not you want to focus on trying to be safe. Like, you have to make good decisions. Um, I wouldn't recommend you walking around Tulum Town drinking all night in, at, like, 3 or 4 in the morning. Like, I wouldn't recommend that outside my house. <laughs> right. um, you just have to make good decisions. Um, try to follow the rules as best as you can. And it's, you know, I, I don't really know what else to say about that. Yeah. Because I mean, well, that's just like kinda, anywhere else. That's kind of up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we, that happened. We continue to stay there. Yeah. We, we were like scared for a little bit. We talked it out and we're like, well, yeah. Moving on, you know? Um, so yeah, that's really up to you if you take all that into consideration. And, um, I think some people probably shouldn't go. And I think that it is generally safe to go. Because, The moral of everything, all the information we're going to provide for you here is that Tulum is not for everyone. Yeah. Just like Nashville's not for everyone and New York is not for everyone. So.